Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of colors and the playing of the national anthem.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Jornay Bird, the 2022 senior class president. Now we will hear a welcome from Ms. Sophia Trimble, our class of 2022 salutatorian. Good morning, class of 2022 family and friends. We are gathered here today to celebrate the turning of a new chapter. As we leave high school for good and prepare to enter the real world, let's take a moment to remember the steps it took for us to get here. We spent the remainder of our 10th and 11th grade year homeschooled due to a global pandemic. In the midst of millions getting infected and passing away, we managed to conquer and continue to the 12th grade. Even though the struggles many of us face still persist to this day, we manage to overcome them. This day today will mark a major milestone in history, not only for the class of 2022, but for the whole world. We are changing statistics. We are building up communities. We are inspiring lives. We are not tied to who we were in the past. Instead, we are shaping the future. The struggles of our community will not dictate our success. I know this because of how far we have come. Whether college is the next step for some of us or the workforce, may whatever our journeys be, let them be journeys of greatness. After all, we are the class of 2022 and we are destined to be great. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Now we will have the introduction of platform guests from Mr. Ronald Edmonds. Good morning. It gives me great joy and pride to greet you all this morning as we celebrate these marvelous scholars of the class of 2022. I am so proud of each and every one of you. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our platform guests this morning. I'll start with our student leaders, Mr. London Jones, our class valedictorian. Ms. Sophia Trumbull, our class salutatorian. Ms. Jorene Bird, our class president. Ms. Lee Carrington Boney, assistant principal for the 12th grade. This gives me great joy and pride. 20 years ago, I was at her graduation. Dr. Colleen Reed, board education member, board eight. The, the UDC president is here to celebrate with you all. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Dr. Dijon Shields, uh, instructional superintendent for Cluster 9, is here with us today. <laughs> Dr. Minister is here with us as well, joining us from the superintendent's office. The Reverend Dr. Alton Haynes, pastor of Faith Shepherd Baptist Church, who is bringing us commencement address, is joining us. And our school leader, the illustrious Mr. William Rock Haith. Thank you all so much. The next voice you will hear now is the presentation of special awards from the assistant principal and greetings as well, Ms. Leah Bowden. Good morning, everyone.
Our first award goes to London Isaiah Jones, our valedictorian. Our next award goes to our salutatorian, Sophia Trimble. <laughs> our leadership award goes to Tiana Gay. Our Citizenship Award goes to Tiberia Zanders. Our Career and Technical Education Award goes to Damian Thurston. Our Student Athlete Award goes to Japan Spells. Our most improved award goes to Travis Collins, Jr. Our Principal's Achievement Award goes to Journey Bird. We have um, three award winners from the Reverend Dr. Lewis Anthony Foundation. And these are scholarships that go to our salutatorian, Sophia Trimble, our valedictorian, Lyndon Jones, and Deshaun Thompson. And our Inspirational No Educator Award goes to Mr. Ronald Edmonds. Next, we will have the introduction of commencement speaker from the class of 2022 co-sponsor, Mr. Ronald Edmonds. So, I'm not gonna be long, but before I introduce a very special um, person to me, 
I would like to address you all, my soon-to-be fellow alumnus. It's time now. We've been talking all year. My lunch bunch, thank y'all. My leadership team, thank you all. Those of you who trusted me with your personal information and trusted that I would guide you the correct ways, thank you. Those of you who may have had an emotional outbreak that no one else understood, sometimes I didn't. But thank you for allowing me to feel what you were going through. Now my words to you is now to move forward. There's a special song that's going to be sung by two of your classmates. And I'm gonna be honest with you, that song was touched and placed in me by a higher being other than man here on earth. And that song got us to this point where we're sitting right now. We've had adversity all year. But you went on your college class experience. You had a prom. And you can stand up as you move forward in the next phases of your life. I congratulate you all. And I thank you, not only believing in us, your staff, the teachers, in me, your family, but now you believe in yourselves. Take that in the real world. I want you to conquer it. That's my last words of advice to you. Thank you. At this time, I would like to now introduce our commencement speaker. Um, this gentleman has been in my life, all my life. Um, not only is he the pastor of Faith, Faith, Faith Shepherd Baptist Church, but he is a family confidant. My family, my grandmother before she passed, so confided in him as do my mother today. So I would like to introduce to you, the, 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 the bio is here in your program. And again, I'll just tell you the things that I know without reading this. He's a godly man. He's a God-fearing man. And he stands up for people in our community. He's a military man. So man, I know we were running a little bit behind time. I know what he was doing because he does that to me each and every Sunday morning. But one thing I know, again, other than he being a God-fearing man, he's a law-abiding gentleman that stands up for what's right. He's a military man, so he's on time. So he's gonna to come to you, the Reverend Dr. Alton L. Haynes, again, the pastor of the Faith Shepherd Baptist Church, where he was ordained as minister at the Upper Room Baptist Church in 1996. He is married to the first lady of Faith Shepherd, Miss Merlin Haynes, and they have one son, five grandchildren. And he has so many awards to name, but I know he doesn't want me to go through all of that because he's not that kind of a man. But I ask you, the class of 22, as one of my last requests of you, is to give he and each your undivided attention as we prepare to commence you to become members of this institution. Amen? Okay? Reverend Haynes. Let us pray. God in heaven, as I speak, it is our privilege to invite you here as the guest of honor on this occasion. It is our request that you would bless this graduating class, but more than that and most importantly, we desire that you would be here with us this morning. I ask on behalf of those gathered here that you would indeed bless each of these graduates and the families of which they are a part. 
We ask that they may make a significant contribution to the general welfare of society. May they especially be a blessing to those whose lives they personally touch. And now may you be pleased with what is done here this morning. Thank you for your presence. It is in the name above all others that I pray, amen. To the principal, Mr. William Haight. To the senior class assistant principal, Ms. Leah Carrington Boney. To the senior class sponsors, Mr. Ronald Edmonds and Mr. K Ms. Candice McCorvey. And to the senior class counselor, Ms. Christian Turnstill. And to all of you who are present here this morning, especially to the graduating class, I want to say good morning. It is a good day to be alive. Let me do one thing before I get into my speech, and I want you all to know my speech is only about eight to 10 minutes, and y'all can time me. If I go over 10 minutes, once I start my speech, you stand up and I'm gonna sit down. But I want you right now to stand up, find your loved one, and say thank you. Graduating class, stand up, turn around. Don't sit down quite yet. If your teachers are here, even from staff members, thank them. Even the ones that was hard on you, just said thank you. Y'all forgot that book because you got, you got a principal and assistant. There you go, yeah. All right. And to Mr. Edmonds, I certainly want to thank you for that kind introduction and thank you for inviting me to speak today. I'm very pleased to be here to join you in celebrating this occasion. First of all, congratulations to all of you for graduating from high school. You should be very, very proud of yourselves for accomplishing this goal. Well done. I know you must be excited to be receiving your diplomas and start working toward a new goal. I'm sure that many of you have firm plans and have a pretty good idea of what's coming next along with a dream and a lot of hope to get you there. Some of you this morning are probably still in shock and amazed that you got to this graduation point at all. The future will be exciting and trying, but it will all be dependent on you and your willpower, your determination and motivation to reach your next goal. As you graduate and take on new goals and challenges, I would like to offer you several pieces of advice or takeaways that has assisted me in this journey called life. Number one, be aware of your history. You should not be ashamed of who you are or where you have come from. It is important to know your history in order that no one will be able to rewrite your story or that of your parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. Be aware of your history will allow you to move forward realizing how far you have already come. For instance, if you know the history of Anacostia High School, you know you have a number of alumni that became very important people. They played in the National Football League, National Basketball Association, Major Baseball League. Some have become teachers, lawyers, doctors. You even have one graduate here today that is a speech therapist, and she happens to be the chairperson of my Diggingness Board. One person became a senator. One became a governor. Several have become singers. One graduate, Frederick Drew Gregory, became a NASA astronaut and then NASA deputy administrator. When you are aware of your history, you realize that your class probably have experienced more death of loved ones, friends, neighbors, or possibly even of classmates from gun violence than most young people your age. History tells you about your culture and helps you to know who you are while, while molding the future. Being familiar with past events gives you the ability not only to learn from past mistakes, but also from your successes. Number two, be inquisitive concerning learning. You are completing the first step in your learning. Continue to have the desire to learn more. Never believe that you cannot learn something new. The mind of an inquisitive person is always active. And being inquisitive means being open to learn and to unlearn. 
If you're content with what you already know, you will miss half of it. You are constantly asking questions and searching for answers. If you've been that person in class who always put your hand up to ask a question that stirs up laughter or a sigh or both from classmates, always remember this. The person who asks a question is a fool for a minute. The person who does not ask a question is a fool for life. Studies have shown that curiosity positively correlates with intelligence. Simply put, the more you ask, the more you know. Don't be afraid to say what everyone else is probably thinking. The most trivial question can sometimes be very powerful and unlock new conversations. I know this morning will bring some size and uh, I know this comment probably will bring some size and maybe uh, the thought in your mind that I'm living in another age. Google is very good and contain a wealth of information. However, you can learn just as much, if not more, by asking a human the same questions you ask a search machine or engine. Don't ask someone that's your age or close to it because they know no more than you. Go to the library or ask a teacher or read it for yourself from a book. Reading expands your mind and introduces you to new concepts, ideas, and viewpoints. If you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you're determined to learn, then no one can stop you. Remove the word boring from your vocabulary. Whenever you label something as boring, you close a door of possibilities. Remember, curiosity killed the cat, not the student. So if you're one of those people blessed to have an inquisitive mind, then embrace it. Don't waste time worrying about your so-called friends and what they think, because they will cause you to lose valuable time and opportunities. A quote by Steve Jobs says, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Number three, be determined to succeed. Don't look to anyone else to be your determination. Have self-determination. Don't depend on anyone else to do what you know you should be doing. To be successful means having the courage and the determination and the will to become the person you believe you were meant to be. If you really want to succeed on your personal journey, you must be hungry for that goal. If you're truly hungry for whatever it is that you want to accomplish on this journey called life, your determination will supply the energy you need to motivate and keep you moving toward that goal. Don't look for excuses, but accept challenges, obstacles, and criticisms as motivators and keep moving. Reality is that no one, no matter what you do in life, there will be situations and circumstances that confront you, that you must remain focused and determined to succeed as you did this morning when your transportation didn't show up at school. Your teachers transported you, your parents transported you, and you are here. That, was, that is called determined nation to succeed. The life you live is a lesson you teach. Bottom line, being determined means you make up in your mind to do something and you get it done, come hell or high water. My last point, be kind. The Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave you. To be kind simply means making someone else's life a little bit better. With one kind word or smile, it can turn someone's day around and light them up. No one is perfect. And I believe today that each of you have been in a position to be kind to someone that desperately needed it at that time. Being kind is an action. It is something you choose to do and be. Having empathy is one of the greatest attributes you can possess as a human being. Simply having the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and understand. Be kind for everyone you meet is fighting some kind of battle. Don't only be kind to others, but be kind and love yourself. You will make mistakes, do things that will cause you heartaches, but always be willing to look 
at this journey we call life with humor. And do not forget about the ones who helped to get you where you are today, especially our Heavenly Father. Spend the rest of this day and night with people that have devoted their lives to seeing you reach this goal today. I will close with a saying from my grandmother, and that is, do not be a follower, be a leader. God bless you, Anacostia High graduating class of 2022. Thank you. Now we will have the valedictory speech by the 2022 valedictorian, Mr. London Jones. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? <laughs> okay, so. I'm glad that you all are here. Um, this is my speech. So I want to start the speech off with thanking everyone for being here, of course, um, to support my peers and I. Specifically, I want to thank my mom, who's done everything in her power to make sure that I succeed. I want to thank my aunt, who's here, for being supportive and looking out, as always. And I want to thank my father and everyone in, Black Swan fam in my Black Swan family for having such a huge part into who I became today. I'm truly grateful for you all being here. I know that this year alone has not been an easy one for the class of 2022. We have just come back from being in a pandemic for one and a half years. And so being finally back in school couldn't have been easy. It was certainly difficult, however, we all made it. I look at every single one of my peers within this senior class and I see the resilience we all have, the dedication, and the ability to adapt to change. I also see all of our growth and how far we've come from who we were all the way to who we are now. I know that this is where high school ends for us, but I'd rather look at it as life beginning and our journey starting. I have no doubt that everyone in this senior class has the ability to create change in ways that we need the world to change. I also know that every one of us has all been through our fair shares of setbacks and misfortunes. It's important that we don't let those setbacks and misfortunes define us. Rather, we let those setbacks and misfortunes teach us lessons to help us adapt and grow. I'm really excited to see what will become of this senior class. I just know it's going to shock me to see each and every one of them grow into who they are destined to be. I can say though, that my time at this school has been very lively. I have met nothing but colorful personalities and charisma in this senior class. I want us all to be proud that we made it here, be grateful for the people that supported us and be thankful for the opportunities that will be soon to come. I know for me, I'm gonna miss telling all my teachers and the staff members that they were scamming me. <laughs> Um, I'm also going to miss like everybody in the senior class for real. Um, so with all that said, here are a few things that I would like to end this speech with. And I want everyone to take this with you. And that is, we are not bound by anyone or anything, nor are we limited by anyone but ourselves. We deserve to have a life even better than the ones we have, and we deserve to give ourselves grace and forgiveness when we make mistakes or fail. We are deserving of respect no matter our identity. We don't have to forget in order to forgive. And last but not least, appreciate how far you've come and never let anyone downplay it. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure to share this speech with y'all. Now we have a music selection from Miss London McPherson Dudes and Mr. Davon Burke.
Life is like a big merry-go-round You're up and then down Going in circles trying to get to where you are Everybody's been counting you around But where are they now? Sitting in the same old places, faces in the crowd you gotta give I'd rather stand tall than level my knees cause I am a conqueror and I won't accept defeat try telling me no oh one thing about me cause I am a conqueror that no one else sees light up dirty work roll up your sleeves remember there's a war out there so come prepare to fight you never know where the road leads you not everyone's gonna believe you and even though the wrong don't prove the right I'd rather stand tall That was so good, y'all. Let's give him another round of applause. Okay, now we have the principal's message from our principal, Mr. William Hayes. Thank you, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. And good morning to our uh, esteemed guests on the stage with us here today. I'm not going to be long because I think you all heard enough from me throughout the school year. Whether it's um, sending you to the cafeteria, telling you to go outside, go to class, or just coming to my office and giving me some feedback on my own leadership, which Christian actually did a lot of. Christian, thank you. Um, staying tall. I think that's the message I'm going to go with. As I heard your, your peers come up and sing, the song they just sang, and I think that you all have been standing tall. You all have gone through and had to deal with so much, and people are always talking about COVID, but add your daily lives and the trauma that you all deal with daily, just walking to Anacostia High School, leaving Anacostia High School. The decisions you have to make to avoid trouble at all, at all um, corners of life. You all have earned yourself uh, a round of applause from your parents, from our staff, and I would like for everybody to give the class of 20, 2022 a round of applause. Because it's not easy being a student at Anacostia High School. The things that you all have to avoid every day just to live life isn't fair. But yet, every day you all stand tall and doing the things that you need to do. 
the, the uh, quote I always use, I use it at the honor roll celebrations, I use it at graduations, and I'm going to use it for you all today because I think that it's extremely important. And it's from one of my uh, movies, The Great Debaters, and I know my staff is tired of me saying it, but I believe it to be true. Lonzo, we do what we have to do in order to do what we want to do. You hear me? We do what we have to do in order to do what we want to do. Find out what you want to do. Find out what you want to do. Find out what you want to be. And follow those steps. A big milestone is being accomplished today when you walk across this stage. And when your parents tell you that they know what you're thinking because they've been there before, they have. Stop telling your parents they haven't been there. They don't understand. They don't know what you're going through. Because they have been through it. So listen to them. Listen to your aunts, your uncles, your guardians, those people that you let close to you, to your heart. They will not steer you in the wrong direction. Continue to stand tall. I challenged your teachers at the beginning of the year. I said our students don't need any tough love because they get a, tough, they get a lot of tough love in the streets. And so we decided to identify and define what love is at Anacostia High School. And the data says, because I'm an administrator, so I got to leverage and rely on the data. The data says that we have shown you all that we love you. 92% of you felt that you were loved at Anacostia High School, which is about 25 percentage points higher than the district average. So as I end what I have to say, I want you all to know that we do love each and every last one of you. I personally have seen the way they treat alumni. Come back because our doors will always be open. But what we expect for you to do is to go and disrupt oppressive systems and be stewards of your community. So I expect to see you all back doing something in your community representing you, yourself, your family, and Anacostia High School. Class of 2022, stand tall. Principal Hayes, class of 2022, would you please stand? So I have asked I have asked Dr. Mistera, Deputy Chancellor for the District of Columbia Public School System, to come up and uh, help me with accepting the class. And now, by the power vested in me by the Mayor of the District of Columbia, Mary Bowser, and by the Chancellor of the District of Columbia Public Schools, Dr. Lewis Furby, I hereby certify that the 54 members of the class of 2022 have completed the requirements for graduation from Anacostia High School. Good morning. <laughs> And congratulations on behalf of Mayor Muriel Bowser and Chancellor Farabee, I enthusiastically accept the class of 2022 from Anacostia High School. Congratulations. <laughs> you. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2022 from Anacostia High School.
London Isaiah Jones. Sophia Tremble. Valencia Merriweather. Jornay Bird. London McPherson Dews. Japan Lee Spells. Tiana Gay. Damian Thurston. Jania Lindsay. Christian Mitchell. Gerilyn Hooks. Marquisha Lee. Alasia Clark. Jasmia Pauley. Lene Durham. Sylvia Shorter. Isis Pearson. Lonzo Malcolm. Giamari Watson. Leah Alamu. Renaya Tolson. Nayana Johnson. Dale Davis. Shadeja Whitaker. Makira Thompson. Tybria Zanders. Kevin Medlock. Eliza Braswell. Shade Pearson. Chernell Tabs. Anthony Harris. Jayla Mache Jenkins. Antrius Parks. Faith Ruffin. Tyrone Coleman. James Ray. Lorenzo Green. Christian Lewis. Samuel Hauser. Alasia Antoinette Brown. Bomb, excuse me. Alasia Antoinette Bomb. Jeremiah McCowan. Tiana Brown. Karan Gregory. Eliza Jamal Drummond. Jaden Richardson. Jamil McElhaney. Marcel Arrington. Makai Johnson. Travis Collins Jr.
Deshaun Thompson. Jeremiah Shane Drummond. Davon Burke. O'Shawn Carroll. Graduates, will you now take the tassel that's on the right and turn it to the left? Congratulations. At this time, alumnus, it's now time to take the alumni oath. It will be rendered and offered this year by Ms. Shirley Woods, class of 1972. Repeat after me. I do solemnly affirm as a graduate of the academies of Anacostia High School, that I will give mental, moral, and financial support without reservations to my alma mater in order to support and promote the education and social growth of the students of the academies of Anacostia High School. Anacostia High School! The last and final act of business is now to give honor to our alma mater. Father. Proud for all to view, stands our alma mater, waving red and blue, from the walls of the four star words, sons and daughters true, to the ever proud traditions of the red and blue. Anacostia, Anacostia, lift the banner high. Hail to the alma mater, Anacostia High. 
Before we get ready for recessional, I would like to recognize our Ward 8 City Council member, Mr. Trayon White, who has appeared with us. Thank you so much. And one final thing I would be not be remiss is just thanking everyone on the graduation committee, with music, order, service. I just want to thank everyone from the bottom of our heart. Remember, y'all, let's go conquer this. Let's go conquer it. Congratulations again.